Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos on classification and evolution. In this video, I will provide an overview of Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, the set of idealized conditions necessary to keep a population constant, that is, with no evolution. There are five requirements that are listed here that will be elaborated upon shortly. In addition to providing an overview of this topic, the mathematics used to determine if a population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium will be demonstrated. The first requirement for a population to be in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is that the population must be very large in size so that genetic drift does not occur. This picture provides an example of what can happen with genetic drift. If a population is small in size, some random event may have a large impact on the allele frequency of a population. If one man happens to step on two-thirds or even all of the organisms that possess some particular allele, such as green coloration, or a bird were to randomly eat half of a very small bug population, it can have significant long-term effects. This chance event could change the allele frequency of the entire population considerably. The second requirement for a population to be in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is that there can be no immigration or emigration, that new genes cannot be introduced or removed from a population by individuals that can move about. The human population moves considerably, Individuals of Northern European descent naturally have very light skin coloration, but the considerable migration of individuals from other parts of the world carrying these alleles for darker skin color into this population could change the allele frequency over a long period of time. This constitutes evolution of that population. The third requirement for a population to be in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is that the population must have no mutations. Just like with the previous example, immigration and immigration, no new genes can be added to the population by any means. Mutations occur randomly and can be caused by a variety of different circumstances. These random mutations can introduce new alleles into the population and eventually change how common certain characteristics are, especially if they convey some significant advantage. The fourth requirement for a population to be in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is that the population must have random mating. That is, no sexual selection can occur. Sexual selection is another term that would apply to forms of isolation that we described in a previous video. When individuals prefer certain, and sometimes outlandish, features in their mates, sympatric isolation can occur. Mating of brightly colored tropical birds would provide a real-world example of this. The mating habits of bugs shown on this slide would also provide an example. The final requirement for a population to be in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is that natural selection cannot be occurring in the population. All traits must have an equal likelihood of reproduction and survival. Natural selection, in short, is survival of the fittest. An example is provided on this slide. Certain bugs may taste better than other bugs to birds. Some rabbits may be faster than other rabbits. Some birds may blend in better to their environment than others. Some humans may be more likely to have twins. Any trait that provides some reproductive or survival advantage changes the allele frequency of a population over time. This is why, in order to maintain a constant population, natural selection cannot occur. Assuming that all of the aforementioned conditions are met, which is never the case as these are an idealized set of conditions, you could use the following two equations to learn more about the genetic makeup or genotypic makeup of a population. The top equation shows three potential genotypes that individuals could possess for a particular trait. In this equation, P squared represents individuals that are homozygous dominant for this particular trait. 2PQ would represent individuals that are heterozygous for it. And Q squared would represent individuals that are homozygous recessive. Note that all three possibilities, together, add up to one. When represented numerically, 100% can be written as 1. The number of individuals in a population that are homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, and heterozygous would be expected to add up to 100%. The bottom equation on this slide represents the frequency of different alleles in a population. The picture on this slide provides a visual for what allele frequencies are. Usually, individuals have two different forms of a gene. In the picture to the right, these are expressed with A's and B's. Individual genotypes could be AA, AB, or BB. And if you were to tally up the total number of A's and B's of that population and express them as a percentage, as is shown on the bottom, 
you would find the frequency of these different forms of the genes, or the allele frequencies. In this equation, P represents the frequency of the dominant allele, and Q represents the frequency of the recessive allele. Again, the frequency of both traits, when added together, would add up to 1, which is, again, 100% expressed as a number. Now that you should have a grasp of these two different equations, as well as what they mean, you can take a look at some example problems and see how to apply these equations. The first problem reads, approximately 1 in 1,700 Caucasian children are born with cystic fibrosis, a recessive genetic disorder. Assuming that this population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, what is the allele frequency of this particular trait? The first thing you need to do with this sort of problem is to figure out what information you are given. One thing that's provided in this problem is the fact that 1 in 1,700 children are born with cystic fibrosis, the recessive disorder. Converted to a percentage, this is 0.05%. In order to show or have this recessive trait, you need to have two recessive forms of that gene. Individuals would need to be homozygous recessive. The top equation provided on this slide corresponds to the potential genotypes of offspring. Q squared would represent the individuals that are homozygous recessive, 0.05%. Written as a whole number, this should be expressed as 0.0005. By taking the square root of 0.0005, which is represented as Q squared, you can determine the value of Q, which is the allele frequency of this particular trait, what is being asked for in this particular problem. What you would arrive at for a value of Q, as shown in the bottom left of this slide, is 0.024. Converting this to a percentage, this means that the allele frequency of the population is about 2.4%. Using the two equations, as exhibited in this first example problem, you can quite easily move from allele frequency to and from genotypic frequencies. The second example states that the allele frequency of sickle cell anemia a recessive disorder, is 2%, and ask what percent of the population would you expect to show this trait, assuming that the population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Again, the first step is to filter through all of the wording in this problem and determine what information is given. As you can see here, this problem mentions that the allele frequency of this recessive trait is 2%. Since you are given the allele frequency of the recessive trait, this means that you need to use the bottom equation, which deals with allele frequencies, and apply that number to Q, which represents the recessive allele frequencies. In numeral form, 2% should be shown as 0.02. The problem asks the following question. What percent of the population would you expect to show or have this recessive trait? The only way that you can show or have a recessive trait is if you are homozygous recessive, so you're being asked to solve for Q squared in this particular problem. If you take 0.02, the value for Q, and square it, you would arrive at your answer for this problem, 0.0004 or 0.04%. This means that about one in every 2,500 children would be expected to have this particular genetic disorder. Using these two equations, you can quite easily determine the allele frequencies and the genotype frequencies of individuals in a population just given one piece of information. Oftentimes, the genotypic ratios or allele frequencies of a population do not remain the same. They change. This information can be used to determine if natural selection is occurring for a specific trait. That is the end of this video introducing Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium and providing examples of how to solve these sorts of problems. If you're interested in learning more about evolution or any other themes of biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.